Okay, here we have the E39. The first thing I can say about this vehicle is it makes such a difference having the manual transmission on these vehicles, especially when you start messing around with the, the V8s. Particularly in the low range, so they're a lot quicker off the mark than the automatic, which is standard. I think the 0-60 on these cars is a second either way with the manual and the automatic. The automatics, they come into power around mid-range. Once you're doing 50, 60, 70, 80 miles an hour, that's when the power delivery comes with the automatic. So if you're after one of these and you're, you want something that accelerates quickly, then stick with the manual. But if you want something more for the, the autobahn driving, the motorway driving, then you want to stick with the automatics because that's where the power comes in. Now, one good thing about these cars is when you stick it in reverse, the near side mirror will drop down so you can see the curve. You can switch that system off by flicking the um, wing mirror switch to the right. That does cancel it. But it's a very useful feature, but it does backfire on you sometimes because sometimes the mirror will come down when you don't need it to and you won't see people walking behind you. And that's a common problem with that feature. So I would recommend disabling it unless you, you of course need to use it when you're parking. Now the rear view vision is okay. I will say though that the headrests do obstruct a lot of the vision and if you had three people in the back, personally I don't think you'd see much at all. Now the wing mirrors aren't bad. They're a little bit small. I think they could be a bit wider to be fair. I don't really think it's going to sacrifice that much of the aerodynamics to have larger mirrors. The car does pull quite nicely. I wouldn't have said it's the most torquey of the three litres. Uh, if you take the three litre diesels that are available now in the year 2012, they're a lot more torquey than this car. Now I know this particular car is the best part of 14, 15 years old, but it just shows how, how much the diesels have progressed. They're very solidly built, these cars, and to many people they were probably probably the last of the good looking BMW 5 series because they certainly turned into ugly computers at the moment. This particular model has the brown fake veneer wooden trim which personally I don't like. I think if something's going to be wood it should be wood. You can't make plastic look like wood and expect to get away with it. However, I can assure you that these panels here are very easily uh, changed and they do literally pop off. This is the older model because I know it's got the tape cassette deck in. That system can be changed. You can pull that out and put a sat nav monitor in, or you can actually put a regular stereo in, so don't let that put you off. And you also have the CD version as well. It's the uh, CDs are in the back with the amplifier. The instrument cluster on these is very clear, very precise. It's the standard BMW, which seems to come through many models. It's not obstructed by the steering wheel, however, on a lot of these models you have electric adjustment for the steering, not with this particular car. Going back to this centre console, Going back to stereo, this centre console, the stereo in this one, the unit that you can replace with the sat nav, etc., I'm pretty sure it's the same as the X5, so that opens up a lot more broad to horizons if you want to update that system. Now you've got your heating controls down here, it's not the turn dial type, it's the button type and uh, on some particular models you'll have the traction control down here, you don't with this model. Now one feature of this car, it's a small feature which is a negative, is the cup holders down here, they're very fragile, very common for those to break, so be aware of that if it's going to be an issue for you. This is the 5 speed manual, it wouldn't hurt to see a 6th gear on this car to be fair especially if you are a motorway driver. Now sometimes the steering on the E39s can be a bit vague, there can be a bit of movement there. But this one's very taut, and I really do feel like I'm connecting with the road and not the power steering. There's no none of that anaesthetized feeling that you get from the power steering. It's, it really does feel like a driver's car, this. Very comfortable, great driving position. The interior is very nice, except for this wooden trim really does feel like a beautiful, powerful car. There's something you could travel across the country in, no problem at all. 
Now one thing that's always good on these old Beamers is the brakes. Let's have a look at the brakes now. As always, beautifully smooth, fantastic delivery. Balanced, synchronised, you can feel every caliper working in beautiful harmony. The, the old 5 Series, even the E34s, the brakes on those cars are amazing. Very, very good braking system. Test okay, 3, 2, 1, go. Basically, to summarise, there's not a lot of things about this car that I, I, I can falter. I believe in the older models, um, there were some problems with the ABS, etc, etc. Um, but to be fair, these are great cars, you're going to be able to pick these up for next to nothing. The 535 is a great model, the 540 is a great model. Obviously a very thirsty car, but powerful. They go like steak and they're great to drive. These are drivers.